Sports on everybody. I and Eagle, Jim Spinarco, Evan Washburn, the rest of our CBS crew. We believe they will turn the lights on for this game. We're ready for action. March Madness is here. This is one of the best days on the sports calendar. Selection Sunday, and we're going to crown a champion in the A-10. These have been the two best teams in the conference. They really have been, and they've been playing well, but they're great defensive teams, but they do it in different styles. Dayton's more of a half-court defensive team. VCU likes to go up and down. Quicker pace, but full court pressure we're going to see this afternoon. Send it over to Evan Washburn. Hey, uh, for Anthony Grant, today is not just an opportunity to win an A-10 championship with this team, but it's to return this Dayton program back to the NCAA tournament for the first time in his six-year tenure. And I spoke to him about it earlier today, and he said it is on his mind as an alum, but also for the special teams he's had that couldn't make a trip to the dance. Most notably, guys, that 2020 team led by Obi Toppin, we know would have been a presumptive one seed before the tournament was canceled due to the pandemic. Guys, he carries them with him today. No doubt. They were 29 and 2. They were number 3 in the country. They had a chance to win a national championship that year. Now Dayton is trying to get back to the big dance. Our starting lineups Malachi Smith, local product from the Bronx. Up front, we mentioned what Kamara and Holmes can do. VCU balance scoring. There's not one guy that just steps forward and provides all the offense. It's a mix for Mike Rhodes. He said this team has been as enjoyable a group as he's ever coached in his 19 hey, years as a head man. Our officiating crew, excellent group, Ron Groover, Jeff Anderson, Brian O'Connell for this championship matchup. We're underway in Brooklyn. VCU controls the tip. And I, in yesterday's Two games were very competitive in terms of the aggressiveness on the floor. You can anticipate that from both of these defensive-minded teams to start things off. Rams are rotting an eight-game winning streak. Their last loss came to Dayton. Deloach looking to go back door. It was too far. And out of the outstretched reach of Ace Baldwin out of bounds. Sometimes that makes sense to do that. To throw a little backdoor action early on to loosen up the defense. For Dayton, first A-10 championship game appearance since 2015. They haven't been to the NCAA tournament since 2017. And a quick double team on Smith, who didn't play in either of the two games that these two teams played earlier in the year. Post-up opportunity, Holmes on a kick. Brea keeps it alive. They're playing without Kobe Elvis out for the tournament with a knee injury. Shot clock winding down. Holmes makes his move. Nice touch. Deron Holmes, the second, breaks the seal. And as we touched on at the beginning of the broadcast, the two bigs have been playing so well. They have to get touches early on. That's where they have an advantage with their size. Richmond won the Atlantic 10 championship last year, got the automatic bid to the NCAA tournament. Open look. Nick Hearn drains it from long range. He's not a three-point shooter. Basically coming in one for seven, but if you get that open shot, you have to take it. Watch for him to put it on the floor, too. He's very good when he puts it on the deck and goes after the rim. Talented swing man brings a lot of energy to this VCU squad. They've got a 3-2 lead. Smith in a matchup out front against Jaden Nunn coming off a big effort in the semifinals. Brea, the jumper, no. Too strong. Rebound, Johns. He guided it to his teammate, Kern. Johns is one of the new faces of transfer from Michigan. A pretty good work there by Baldwin defensively to get out and contest the three. Lefty jumper off the rim. Rebounded by Holmes. He averages just under eight per game. Yeah, I don't expect Dayton to really push the ball up the floor. They take close to uh, in about 19 seconds on average for their half-court sets. So they're just going to do what you're seeing right now. A little cutting to the basket, working it around, and then hopefully get it to the big hit, big guys down low. Pressure out front on you go. Feed it. The roll. Holmes couldn't slam it, but it goes in a foul. Deron Holmes, the second, will head to the free throw line. He came in with 88 dunks on the season. Will this count as a dunk, Jim? Uh, it does if I were doing it. Because <laughs> I never did it. <laughs> Are you the dunk doctor? <laughs> I need a dunk doctor is what I need. But that was Dayton basketball right there. Patience, use the clock, and get it through the middle of the floor. They are not going to count the basket. Any interfere with it. So he's going to shoot a pair. Foul called. Yes, he held the rim. And then the ball bounced through. And already, Dayton will not take advantage of this on the missed first free throw. You know, he's hanging on the rim, and he also touched the ball while it was free up, up top also. So Deron Holmes, the second, will get his second attempt, and one out of two. 
But even though they don't get that dunk or the bucket just then, Anthony Grant has to be very happy with that execution. Now they show a little full court action, 2-2-1. Two, two, little taste of their own medicine. Yeah, exactly. None picked up on the outside. And now Baldwin with 15 to shoot. VCU wants to play at a faster pace. None body bump from Brea. Dayton's in a 1-3-1 one, one zone right now. It doesn't look like it. They're a little confused, but that's what it's supposed to be. Kern probing. None has to make it happen. Shot clock winding down. None tosses it up. And Dayton takes over with a tight defense. Good switch there, too, with the zone, zone defense. Dayton showing a couple of quick looks, man-to-man -man and in the zone. You talked about the patience. Dayton is never in a rush on the offensive end. Kamara coming off two big games in this tournament. Loop it for Holmes. So far, we've seen the touches for the bigs. Rims out on the mid-range J. And yeah, he has that shot, too. He can shoot that. Some thought he could have been the player of the year in this conference. Wow, slashing to the rim. Kern couldn't finish it. And the rebound controlled by Dayton's Kamara. Here's Smith. Spin, kick, open look. Kamara, front rim, no. And a foul call. Deloach got the body on Holmes. Who will become the champion of champions? Global MVPs team up with challenge legends in the new series, The Challenge World Championship, now streaming exclusively on Paramount+. Plus. The road team won each of the first two meetings. They split them this season. Both teams open up one of four from the field. Now those games were decided by a total of five points also. 63 was the most points scored in those games, so expect a low-scoring game this afternoon. VCU had 90 points in the semifinals against St. Louis yesterday. Shot clock winding down. Holmes. A little bit of a push from behind, possibly. So the shot clock was down to 1.9, but... With the whistle now, Dayton's going to work off the baseline. And so here he is underneath, and no, I think Baldwin touched the ball and was out of bounds. That's it. They retain it. Same but, shot clock. But Dayton has to work quickly. Brea, open look. Off the heel. Back tap by Omsiel. And a new opportunity here. Smith, book it. A three. A hustle play by Omsiel just then gets them three. Was hitting that offensive glass. VCU just seems a little slow with their intensity level to me right now. VCU, number one seed in the tournament, 15 and 3 in the conference, 26 and 7 overall. Johns off the double team, diagonal. None hangs in the air, and Johns flips it in off the window. So against that 1 3 1, the corners are usually a place that you have some advantage if you catch it there and make something happen quickly. VCU led the Billikens by as many as 25 points. Kamara, push shot, no. Acts as a pass. Foul is called. Basket won't count for Holmes. It was on the floor. We'll step aside. 15-36 mark of this. First half, Dayton and VCU in the A-10 championship. Great to have Rodney the Ram in the house here in Brooklyn with Dayton in front by one. Time for Inside March Madness presented by Buick. Winner here, of course, goes to the NCAA tournament. Look, Jimmy, you follow all the metrics, and yep. this is a must-win situation here for Dayton. They're not going to have the resume to get in. VCU, they look like an NCAA tournament team, but all the indicators are they've got a win to get in. Yeah, I agree with you, though. I think their, their season, their consistency throughout the season, they've been playing better over the last six or eight games. So I think, yes, they, they have what it takes to get to the NCAA tournament. VCU, only one of the last eight Atlantic 10 regular season champions won the tournament. So regular season success has not necessarily right. equated to tournament success in this conference. Holmes off the mark of the free throw line. We've had some changes here. VCU sends in Jameer Watkins and David Shriver. Three fouls on VCU. Baldwin picked up the personal just before, before the timeout. And watch the Shriver. He is a shooter for long range. 142 of his 176 with three-point shots. So watching him yesterday, just a split second, and he will release from long range. He shoots it at 41% yeah. from downtown, transferred from Hartford. John's double team. Watkins was a starter, now coming off the bench. Talented sophomore, torn ACL last year. John's nice spin on a drop step. Foul was called as he made his move on the baseline. 
So Brea was trying to defend him. That's the first Dayton foul of the afternoon. Watch that drop step. He gets the lean in, beautiful body. He wasn't going to get that bucket if it counted. It was on the floor. Nice spin again, but he loses it. Oh. John's good effort just to get there, but he is called for the foul as he launched his body towards the basketball. Yeah, when you make a dive like this, and I know you go after it when you make a mistake, there's a little bit of contact, and he takes down the Dayton player just then. They're going to call that in terms of going after the ball on the floor. And that's the second foul on John. So he is now on the bench for VCU. Spread it. On seal. Kobe Brea had been coming off the bench. He was the sixth man of the year in the A-10 last year. Ball movement leads to Smith. Well, teardrop is way off. Caught. Flipped up, no, but a foul. Kamara in the right spot. He always yeah, seems to be in the right spot. Because that was not a lob, I'll tell you that. That was a shot along the baseline that was just a little too far by two feet. But you're right, you have to come in there and make sure you get to the offensive glass. And it's generally very difficult for guys to block out on an air ball like this. Because you sense that it's going to hit the rim and kick off. When it doesn't, the timing is thrown off. Kamara, the transfer from Georgia, will get a second free throw. Substitution for VCU, Zeb Jackson, transfer from Michigan, checks in. Dayton with Mike Sheriff Chomps, seeing his first action, dealing with a right knee injury. Jackson is somebody to watch for VCU also. Gives them a lift, very energetic, really sticks you defensively also. All the way to the cup, foul called as Baldwin makes his move. He is fearless going to the basket. He's added about 20 pounds during his college career, so there's a reason why he goes there with assertiveness. Foul called on Kamara. Well, this is two different ways to approach it. Dayton, they are leaning heavily on their starters. VCU will balance out the minutes. They have more of a bench that they can lean on in these situations. Injuries obviously have affected the Flyers' rotation. And I'm because of that, I thought that I'd see VCU in terms of the up-tempo defense. I thought you, we would have seen more full-court pressure in terms of using that to their advantage. Baldwin misses on a pair. He's an 81% shooter. Dayton is controlling the glass 8-2, but the fouls are building up on VCU. Total of five right now, so keep going towards the basket. It's worked for you. Smith comes to the ball. Pressure defense. Kamara bumping bodies with Shriver. Kamara, no good. And the rebound by Watkins. Kamara and Holmes are both very good at using the dribble and the bounce of the body. Watkins has got bounce. It's denied on the inside by Holmes. Denied again. Out of bounds. Two for the price of one for Dayton. And what Dayton tries to do, if you're beaten to the basket, they know enough to let the guy go in terms of letting your big guys challenge down deep. And you see this right now two times, and they go after it again. Great work in helping one another out, as big should. Front side, Holmes, and then backside, Kamara. So exactly as we talked about at the top of the show, those two guys establishing themselves offensively and defensively on the interior. Kamara will get a rest. Here comes a double team. Smith handles it with a stutter step move. He's picked up by Jackson. 9-5 Dayton. He's got the speed to dribble away from the double team just then. Into the game is R.J. Blakeney, the swing man from Baltimore. There haven't been many offensive sets where the bigs have not touched the ball. Great move, couldn't finish. Holmes. Yeah, well defended too. Force him to go along the baseline, out of control. Dayton is 2 of 10 from the field. Watkins crosses. Rudy. Fakes. Rims out with the left hand. Battle for it, keeps it alive. And the bucket counts to Loach in the area. How about Watkins, though, with that move and didn't quit on that play? He was the reason that ball happened to bounce back to his teammate, Deloach. So Jalen Deloach is on the scoreboard. It's 9 7 Dayton. Amsiel has not been looking for a shot. He's just kept the ball moving so far in the first half. Smith, post up opportunity. Amsiel gets a touch. Spin, banks it home. Mustafa Amsil off the window. Yeah, class, the last two trips they went at Shriver both times. Jackson circles. 
Driver gives it up. 11-7, Dayton. Jackson, the drive, ducks inside for the two. Oh, you forget that he's lefty right there defensively. I think it was Holmes who thought he was a right-handed player and he was going to continue on the right side, but he converts back to the left. What a terrific move and timely move. And he's a good ball handler yep. with excellent instincts and feel. Mike Rhodes believes he's got a big future yep. in this program. And it starts at that defensive end. He really locks you down. BCU cuts it to two. He's got Smith right now. Smith, five to shoot. Crosses. No opening. Fake on Jackson. Shot clock winding down. Smith tosses it up. It's a shot clock violation. Jackson was oh so close to fouling him just then. Maybe that's what Anthony Grant is talking about. That is the first Dayton turnover of the day. And look at this shot. They go into the blocks constantly to try to get things down low. And look at this answer by Jackson switching to the left hand. for Dayton on top of VCU. Moments ago, Evan Washburn with Rams head man, Mike Rhodes. Well, Coach Dayton obviously committed to getting the ball inside. Yeah. How do you best defend it without fouling? Well, you got to get in the way first. That helps, right? Get in the way and then make him shoot over us. Make him not get as deep. Do your work early in the post. Got to do your work early and we got to have better ball pressure outside to help our teammates in, in the post. Coach, thanks. Thank you. All right, Evan, thank you. And we talked to Coach Rhodes prior to the game. He said our style has to win out over their style. The goal was to crack 70 points against this outstanding defense. Yeah, when Evan asked him, I thought at the end of that question, too, how do you do it without fouling? Because he knows that they're going to try to get the ball down low, pressuring the perimeter. But the, they've been four for six right now, Dayton from the line. They're only three for 12 from the floor. So I think he's happy with part of it, not so happy with the fouling part. Ace Baldwin, A-10 player of the year, defensive player of the year, running the show, roll to the rim, Deloach. Gets his feet set, tip in, that won't go for Watkins, battle for it, out of bounds, last touch by VCU, so two opportunities, point blank range, no points to show for it. Deloach not catching the ball cleanly though, when you don't catch it cleanly as a big, it's even more difficult to gather and then start one or two dribbles to get your rhythm. Dayton got a quarterfinals win over St. Joe's, 60 to 54, strong efforts from Holmes and Kamar, it's going the other way. So trying to establish on the inside, foul on Kamara. Nope, make that Blakeney who will pick it up. Kamara looked around. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say he had a look on his face like, you're kidding me, right? I didn't even do anything. He didn't even start the post up. 11-9, Dayton in front. Somebody's got to go towards the basket a little bit if they're going to bring the defensive center out with Holmes where he is. Watkins trying to make a move. Kick it to the outside and Jackson. Little mismatch on the blocks. Shot clock winding down. Jackson lets it fly. Off the heel. Rebound tracked down by Watkins and a reload. Well, you can see what emphasis and energy he gives him off the bench. Watkins drills the triple. He has really excelled off the bench. And VCU has got the lead, 12-11. Double figures yesterday with 15 points. Blakeney, short, see on a three they, ball. Yeah, see if they can go with it now. Get it ahead for Watkins, waits for his teammates. Look at the transition defense, though. Feed it inside, Deloach loses the ball. He coughed it up, out of bounds. He's getting pretty good position against Holmes just then, but not really getting himself under control. That's just a beauty by Watkins, just really emphasizing the offensive glass and just a, almost like a set shot from long range where he shoots it just over 30% on the season. Dayton shot 70% from the field in the second half against Fordham. Not having that kind of success here this afternoon. Holmes, tremendous position as he gets to the cup. Uh, and once again, you notice that body bump. It's one, it's two, so... They may have to just go down, not dig at him, but go down and strongly double-team him because you can't give him two bumps like that to get underneath the basket. Little bump out front. Foul called Watkins before his shot attempt as he made his move on Kamara. Watch how far back. See where he catches the ball, now watch where he shoots it from. There's one, there's two, and now he's in the restricted zone. 
and putting it just laying into and laying it into the basket. Way, way too easy. Second foul on Kamara, so Anthony Grant has to make a change here as Mustafa Amsil, the junior from Helsinki, Finland, checks in. And I say way, way too easy with Holmes, but he only averaged 18 points a game this year, so he knows what he's doing. Many believe he could have been the player of the year in the conference that went to Baldwin. Turning on the inside, bucket counts. Toby Lawal, a freshman from London, getting an opportunity in this first half. And it was almost a tie-up before he got that ball free to put it into the basket. He is already above his season average. <laughs> 1.3 points per game. He gets the deuce to put VCU in front by one. Trying to use his 6'8 body right now. This is a, a pretty good assignment. Whoa, watch out. Blakeney collision on the pump fake. Kern just laid out defensively. And if anything, it's Kern who takes the brunt of it on the fall. Blakely pops up, and Kern is having an issue right now. Well, the thing about it, he showed the ball fake and decided that he wanted to go to his right, and that's where the collision was just waiting to happen. Our first sack of the game. 14-13, VCU in front, and Kern go. has gotten himself together. Yeah, good to see him bounce up. So Nick Kern is going to head over to the VCU bench. This is not what he thought would happen when he went airborne. No, not at all, and it's good to see him bounce back up sometimes. Well, he's now headed towards the locker room. I think it's a combination. The contact that he had and then his foot got caught yep. awkwardly as he went down Kearns the sophomore from St. Louis and I, I like when they bring him if they need to bring him out yeah not on the bench agree get away let him clear his head to see make sure that he's okay that's 16 fouls against VCU the Holmes one on one again ball fake and that's too easy Deron Holmes, the second. Beautiful move on the interior. Yeah, VCU has to make a decision to go double-team him, and if they hit a couple of threes, so be it. VCU, six field goals from six different players in this first half. One-point lead for Dayton. None looking to get involved. Drives in on Holmes, off the double. That's a deep one from Watkins. Splash! Well, he's catching it in rhythm, and he is recognizing very early in the set that nobody's coming out to challenge him. He will put it on the floor also, so you have to worry about that defensively. He is carrying himself yeah. with a lot of confidence sure right is. now. You can see, coming off the bench, they let him read the, uh, the game for about five minutes to see how the flow is going. Dumped down, Lawal overcommitted defensively against Holmes. He'll pick up the foul. So that's 17 fouls now on VCU. See him just sitting out here waiting. Nobody's going to react. Bang. And once again, here's Holm go Holmes going down low. Just too much to handle for a young freshman. All right, Kern is back on the bench. Good sign, but he was obviously frustrated. One and one here for Holmes. 66% shooter. And it's rebounded by Lawal. Dayton does not commit fouls. Only no. 13.6 fouls per game. That's the sixth fewest in the country. So if you think you're just going to get to the free throw line on this Dayton team, it doesn't happen. Now that's why I was saying you have to start putting the ball on the floor. Here's, oh, there's a push. That's not going to... And that's a foul. Yes, <laughs> as I throw out the number. <laughs> Our game summary here in Brooklyn, neither team shooting it well. We knew defense would be a calling card in this A-10 championship. Moments ago, Evan Washburn caught up with Dayton head coach Anthony Grant. Yeah. What are some factors that are going to lead to separation for your squad in this type of back-and-forth game? Yeah, well, we got to defend a lot better than we are, and then we got to be able to get in a rhythm offensively right now. I don't feel like we're in a rhythm that we need to be right now, so we just got to settle down and do what we do better. Coach, thank you. All right, Evan, the connection with this program, Grant, at VCU for three years as the head coach from 06 to 09. That was before he took the head coaching job at Alabama. He was there six years and back to his alma mater, Dayton, now in his sixth season. For Dayton, first A-10 championship game appearance since 2015. Out of the timeout, foul is called. 
Good move by Deloach to get to the rim, and now he's heading to the free throw line. And a real good step because they threw Shriver out to the wing very quickly in terms of trying to get a quick shot off. And Deloach, as he was going to shoot, look to shoot the ball from three, was setting himself up for an easier catch along the baseline. Well designed out of bounds play underneath their basket. Sixth team foul. First on Sheriff Johns. Deloach shoots it. 58%. Bracket season is here. Show off your college hoops expertise. This March, play the official bracket game of the NCAA. Get the CBS Sports app and be a part of the madness. VCU now 0 of 3 at the free throw line. Now 1 of 4. 18-15. Rams. So a made free throw allows them to set up. And watch Shriver. He likes to jump and look for double teams. If it's there, if not, they back off into their man-to-man, -man, which they're in right now. Sheriff Jones got a lot of experience with the injury to Malachi Smith. Inside, Holmes slams it down for Dayton. That's a team read just then, too. They go high-low, but you have to understand where the defender is playing. Holmes down deep. They read it as a team as well as you can possibly read it. And he's been the guy for Dayton. Ten points to lead all scores. Jumper Watkins off. Rebounded by Holmes. Dayton down by one. Get into it early here with Blakeney. Continue to look to the blocks, don't they? Constantly. I'm sealed. The back end. Baby hook is silky smooth. Yeah, I, most guys, and these guys can do it well for Dayton, but if you get one, two, three dribbles down low, closer and closer, most guys now have developed a little jump hook gives you extension away from a shot blocker. VCU is riding an eight-game winning streak. They've won 10 of their last 11. Deloach with his team down by one. Wow. Baldwin yeah. travels out front. No wonder why it was fast. <laughs> they took an extra step. Turnover, Ace Baldwin. Both teams shooting it at just 41% from the field. Yeah, watch the high-low action right here. It's just going to drift it right to the basket. You understand that you're not getting it on the left. You go right and watch. Here's that little jump hook I was talking about. Number one, you get it off in traffic. Number two, you freeze the defender and get it off smoothly. Get it inside. Holmes against Deloach. There's a double team a little bit. Clips it up. Oh, no. Rebound. Brea comes out of nowhere for the board. Set it up. Amcio got a three. Well, 53% of his shots come from the three, and we all know that when there's an offensive rebound, shooters find spots on the open floor. And Dayton just getting into a rhythm right now. And a 7-0 burst for the Flyers. Under six minutes to go, first half. I'd like to see VCU start taking somebody off the dribble to the basket. And none's going to try to do it here. Kick it. Kern is back in. See, one and two guys. Now bring it back in if you can. Shot clock is down to four. Baldwin pull up pop. Bottom. Boy, well, can get his shot off the mid-range shot because he's so quick. And I always say those lefties have that advantage. <laughs> did you have issues with I lefties? I did have lefty you, issues. You tend yeah. to bring that up. Oh, big screen out front. They handle it. And down goes Sherem Jones in the process. Offensive board. Holmes goes upstairs for it and finishes. What a sequence for the Goodyear, Arizona native. 24-20, Dayton, 12 points, five boards. Shriver rims out on a three ball. Watch out, you got a layup. Leak out, Blakeney flushes it down. VCU wants a timeout. Dayton's got its largest lead. I think everybody's so confident in Shriver that when he shoots the basketball, they think it's going in. Nobody got back on defense. Dayton is red hot. This guy's got legitimate moves. The Flyers have made seven of their last nine shots, and Holmes patrolling the glass. Yeah, he can just flat out go after it, and he finishes very well, especially when he catches it three feet away. And here's that run out. Nobody gets back on defense. It's kind of just a little bit of a lob pass over the defense. And look at all five VCU players have their backs to the camera. That's not a good sign. Second chance opportunities, 11-5 in favor of Dayton. First meeting was January 13th. VCU eked out a win, 63-62. to 62. 
Driver had 18 points in that game. Second meeting was February 7th. Dayton got it done, 62 to 58. Kamara, 26 points and 15 rebounds. Holmes went for a double double. It almost feels like VCU is down by more than six, mm -hmm. really, with the, with the flow of this game. So they're not in bad shape, but I just don't think they're in love with their shot selection. Seventh appearance in the A-10 championship game for VCU. Joined the conference in the 12-13 season. None got a good look at it, and it's off the rim. Yeah, the mid-range shot can work for them, too, because their guards are quick enough to get to spots. Dayton looking to extend its lead. Sheriff Jones gives it up. Now they have Holmes outside, and now that he's pointing to bring it over to the left here to deliver to him. Holmes one-on-one -on -one with Johns back in the game. Johns pokes it away. Active hands. Well, they needed that just to stop the, the rotations for Holmes and the pressure he's putting on them with the basketball down low. Zeb Jackson back in. The handles. Kick. Kern drives in. Could not finish off the window. One on one. Race to the rim. Smith ball fakes. Wow. Off of the ball. What a steal by <laughs> Nunn. Baldwin is fouled on his way to the rim. Sheriff jumps will pick it up. So a couple of defensive plays that could help trigger VCU. Yeah, this is how they like to play. They don't quit. Watch, he brings the ball back to his strong side, and it's taken away. Four hours and counting until we see who is going where in the 2023 NCAA tournament. Last tickets to the dance, Ivy League, SEC, here in the A-10, the American, and the Big Ten coming up on CBS. Yeah, Texas A&M and Memphis are two teams that are really playing well right now, and how about Penn State with a big win? Baldwin has been held to two points. He's missed his only two free throw attempts. He only attempts five and six for the team also. Gritty performer, really sets the table for this Ram squad. And plays a lot of minutes for them. He does. Leads the conference in steals. He's number two in assists. He's the team's leading scorer at just over 12 and a half points per game. VCU cuts it to four. And a little full court pressure right now. VCU style. Let's see what they get out of it, if anything. Blakeney picked up by Nunn. Back into the hands of Malachi Smith out of St. Raymond's High School. One of the top point guards in New York City. When he came out of high school, foul called before Amseal could get that shot off. Another hold on VCU. Well, when you look at Holmes, the way he plays, he's getting these touches, but they use that phrase, digging down, meaning a guard is going to come in and kind of fake that he's going to double team. And now they just let him go one-on-one. -on -one. And here's that high-low action. Keep in mind, when he does get double teamed, about 20% of their offense comes from passing out of the post. So they react to that in a pretty strong manner. I'm seal of the free throw line. One-on-one -on -one here for Dayton. Team fouls, eight against VCU. Personal foul was picked up by Watkins. Um, seal makes a pair to give Dayton a six-point lead. Nine points for Mustafa Amseel. Watkins out front, defended by Amseel. 13 to shoot. Drop it off to Loach. Ball fake. Off the rim. And the rebound secured by Amseel. It took them 10 seconds to get into that set, but I think they have to go a little quicker off the dribble to make Dayton rotate. Three or four passes around the horn. It's just not, that's exactly what Dayton wants. Dayton led Fordham by three at halftime, then had a key 9 0 run in the second half to finish off the win. See, here's that dig, and now there's a double team. They kick it out. Smith can't hit the three. Rebound going the other way. Amseel got his body in there. Coming up, AT&T at the half. These guys are going to be working hard today. Greg, Clark, Jay, Seth. First half analysis. Update the teams that are in the tournament. Give us all the scores and highlights. Final Sunday of the regular season. It's all coming up at the half. Jackson sits, replaced by Kerr. Free throws here for Jameer Watkins. It's a one and one Watkins shoots it at 70%. Had a good freshman year, averaged just over seven points per game, torn ACL, missed his sophomore season, the 21-22 season. He's come back, and he's looked 
Sharp, nine and a half points per game, over five rebounds, over a steal per game as well. Yeah, and five consecutive double-figure scoring games, including 15 against St. Louis. So, right off the bat, when he got into this game, you could see the tempo change Agreed. a little bit for v VCU. From Trenton, New Jersey, Trenton Catholic. And he converts on a pair. He's got eight points off the bench. 28-24, Dayton. We are under three minutes to play. First half, A-10 championship. This is important. Who can control this possession here with Smith and none playing defense on him? Does Smith control it with confidence? Back in. On the seal. Turns. On target. Off the window. Feathery touch from the man from Finland. And I have to tell you, too, defensively, Kern played that fairly well, but there's a guy who just understands where he wants to get his shot off and understanding that bank shot will work. Two-man game inside, banks it in. Yeah, they, so to Loach with the position. They got to squeeze the floor a little bit here, get it going towards the basket. Good hands that time for Deloach, and you notice that he catches the ball, and when he catches it, he goes quickly with it. Swing it around the perimeter, Blakeney looking. On the seal, kick, Blakeney launches, can't hit the three. Uncontested rebound for Deloach. A double team that time, they were in trouble because there was a mismatch. Good kick to the perimeter. Nunn has those herky-jerky moves. Flips it up, no good. Rebound, controlled by Holmes with a minute 38 on the clock. Malachi Smith, flashy point guard, good playmaker. Blakeney on a bounce, foul called. The body from Kern on Amseal. Yeah, so now watch Baldwin just bringing defenders to him, the quick slip pass. And like I said a second ago, the centers catch it and balls up high. It's easier for them to grab rather than the bounce pass down around their waist. You can just finish it right off. Mustafa Amseal was a soccer player as a kid, made the transition to basketball as David Schreiber checks back in. Kern will take a seat. Amsiel has a brother, Abdullah, who is six foot seven and is currently a junior in high school. So I think so. there might be some teams interested. <laughs> a little bit. Sister Latifa plays junior college basketball in the state of Florida. Had that memorable buzzer beater against Kansas during the 21-22 season. And he has put up 13 points in the first half here at the A-10 championship. 32-26, foul trouble. We have not seen Kamara for an extended period on the bench with those two fouls. VCU trailing 32-26. Deloach, quick move. He got blocked, but a foul on Blakeney. Yeah, don't you think he could have gone to the reverse side? Just Agreed. He, he put the brakes on. I think if he took one extra stride legally, he could have gotten to the reverse side. Like right here, he stops to go on the right side. And obviously, he gets fouled. It's still a good move. Maybe an N1 if he steps and strides just a little bit to the reverse. It's up Jalen Deloach who comes from a very athletic family. Brother Kalen, linebacker at Florida State. Older sister Taylor, track at Ohio State. Deloach surely shoots it at 58%. When you get your shoulders leaning towards the basket, you get those free rolls if you get it on top of that front rim. It's from Savannah, Georgia. Had a post-grad year at Skill Academy. We could use that. <laughs> You're looking for a post right here? A little skill. Do you have any eligibility left, as far as you know? Yeah. Let me get back to you on that one, all right? I think it's the skill factory, so it's not even an academy. It's more than that. Under a minute to go. First half, Dayton up by four. And they keep checking the well for Holmes down low. Contact. And it's going to be Shriver picking it up. Mike Rhodes upset. The second. second personal on David Shriver. And one thing to foul, but when a guy doesn't have control of the basketball, he's off balance. That's a perfect time, I would say, to stay away defensively. Shriver yet to score. It's been a whole lot of on seal. 78% from the line still. 
Very consistent, smooth stroke. Looks like a better than 78% free throw stroke. Schreiber, whose mom is Finnish, his father is originally from Morocco. David Schreiber. They need to see if they can get him some touches on the offensive end. Tom Seal is just not missing. He is 6 of 6 of the free throw line. He's 4 of 5 from the field. He's put up 15 points in this first half. He averages 9 per game. And a nice little switch up here by Dayton going 2-2-1. Take a little time off the clock. Jumper doesn't go. It's off. Schreiber overcooked it. Yeah, that's only his second shot, too. That one missed really badly for him. He's a terrific three-point shooter. Well, KG in. The junior for Dayton. Six-second difference. Shot clock to game clock. We're winding down in this first half of the Atlantic 10 championship. Dayton up by six. Shot clock down to five. Get it inside. Holmes. He knew exactly what he wanted to do. Got it done basically all in one motion. Final seconds. They've got their largest lead. Baldwin gets into the teeth of the defense, and he is fouled in the act. 1.4. You know, and the other guy who knew exactly what he wanted to do with the ball was Smith out there. You see the number 11 passing it in. He just waits. There was no weak side help that was really anticipating a lob pass towards the basket. And Smith to Holmes, pretty effective on that trip. Case Baldwin will get a pair. His team is down by eight. Paint points in favor of Dayton, 18 to 10 in this first half. Adrian Baldwin Jr. out of St. Francis Academy. You want to keep this pass if he makes this shot. You want to keep this pass in front of you if you're VCU. Don't let anybody get behind you at half court. Hits on a pair. Six-point game. 1.4 on the clock. One quick dribble. Holmes. Short. Now we hit the break here in Brooklyn. The 2023 Atlantic 10 Championship. Dayton's got the lead over top-seeded VCU, 36 to 30. Hi, Anita Jimmy. Mark Eleven Washer and the rest of our CBS crew. Jimmy, VCU's the one seed. Expecting to see maybe some more defensive intensity in the second half? Yeah, I thought for sure they would bring it out earlier in this game, but I would expect that to start the second half. The other thing, I they, they steal the ball nine times per game. They have two so far, so that's indicative of what you just mentioned. Are they really that intense at the defensive end? And the Flyers are playing this game at their pace as we check in with Evan Washburn. Hey, sign was the word Mike Rhodes just used with me. He wants to play at a faster pace in this second half. He described this game thus far as a rock fight, saying we have to be the tougher team. The priorities rebound the ball better. Now, defensively, obviously doesn't like what they're able to do in the paint, but he'll take that, he told me, over allowing Dayton to get going from three. That's what's keeping this a two-possession game. And for Anthony Grant, he said VCU's regular season champs are not going anywhere. We have to play to our identity. At Evan, Jim, I alluded to those rebounding numbers. Dayton out-rebounded VCU by seven in the first half, 19 to 12. Second chance opportunities. They've taken advantage of them, and they're trying to add to their six-point lead here as we start the second half. Kamara feeds the post. Holmes works his way in, and the tip-in goes. Kamara rolling to the rim on the follow. Yeah, and Evan made a great point there with Mike Rhodes talking about we're okay with it just as long as they don't shoot the ball well from the three-point line. You have to stop that underneath and not worry about the three right now, in my opinion. Deloach got gummed by Holmes. Another 1-3-1 one, one look there by Dayton to come out. Dayton gaining some steam. You see how VCU is sitting back just a little bit on the perimeter, allowing Dayton to just run their sets, take time off the clock. Smith makes his move. Ball movement leads to the Brea three. Off the rim. Offensive board. Good and a foul. It's Holmes with a chance at a three-point play. The lead is double figures. Yeah, whether it's a direct entry to him in terms of going to the glass or working the offensive glass on a missed shot. He now has four offensive rebounds. He's got inside position to start. So if that ball comes down, it's really he doesn't even have to move his feet. And there's that stick back. The two bigs working together. 
The last meeting between these two teams, Dayton had a 16-point lead over VCU at the half. They let it slip away and lost the game 62-58. to Largest lead of the day, 11. Pressure from Dayton, Baldwin, and none handle it. Can they get their offense going? None. Inside. Oh! If you haven't figured it out yet, 43 inches of vertical leap he has. <laughs> and a little hang time to boot. He wears number 24 because of Kobe Bryant, the player that he admired most growing up. And it's 41-32 Dayton. Maybe that'll give them a little bit of lift, but they're going to get a stop on the blocks here. Kamara. Is there a deflection? Yep. Out of bounds. So Dayton will retain it with seven to shoot. So along that baseline, look at the three defenders slide in to cover one guy, and that means your baseline cuts are going to be wide open. Drop it inside. Oh, nice move. Kamara couldn't get it to go. Rebound leaks out, and it's grabbed by Nunn, and a foul called. Positions. Also, our director, Suzanne Smith, one of the best in the business, fantastic helping to lead our group along with our producer Craig Silver in the truck. Part of our terrific CBS Sports staff. Have to start hitting some outside shots. They're really gumming up the middle of the floor. Baldwin's jumper doesn't go. Rebound pops in the air, controlled by Deloach. Wow, a double tip just then for him. Well and done. Reload on a skip pass. Kern. Pop step, hangs and hits. Yeah, I like the way that Holmes challenged him defensively, went straight up, but then a little body bump and finished that off. And so VCU, after that dunk, last two mm -hmm. times down the floor, has shown a little more energy. And we've seen the speed and leaping ability of Nick Kern on a couple of plays. Bounce it. Wow. Kamara spins it in. He put some English on it to Monty Kamara. A little magic on that one, too. The senior from Belgium. Baldwin. A bump from Kamara, and that's going to be foul number three. Here's a little bit of that drag and then the cut to the basket. Oh boy, I'll tell you, that is a fancy delivery just then. He's very springy on the inside and he's got broad shoulders, willing to use it. Sets the feet, Johns, pauses, connects. A three. Nothing but nylon for Brandon Johns Jr. Yeah, the guy who shoots it at 28% coming in, but did you notice how he hesitated just a little bit to say, okay, I'm wide open? You don't want to shoot it when you're that wide open sometimes. You take a little extra time and it was pure. Outside, Kamara. Smith will now get Holmes involved. Skip pass. Brea. Rimming out. Rebounded by Deloach. Much better box out on the right side just then with Holmes on his back that time rather than the inside. Baldwin attack mode. Kick it out. None sticks it for three. Uh, and you just use the word attack, right? One from the right side. Pass it off. A next sec second guy catching the ball. Puts it on the floor again. You get Dayton's defense moving around a little bit rather than being stationary. Much better results with BCU. First point of the day for none. And a steal. Foul called on the reach. And Deloach getting the crowd pumped up here in Brooklyn. 10-2 run for VCU. Just more of a pep in their step in the second half for VCU. It just took a while for the Rams to get going here offensively. VCU, they're sharing the ball, four assists, four field goals made. And remember, this team generally takes their defense to offense, but now all of a sudden you get a couple of shots in that dunk that we saw. The offense is now translated into defensive energy for them. Try to get to the NCAA tournament. Try to get an NCAA tournament win for the first time under Mike Rhodes. Baldwin, drop it inside. With that double team, they made a judgment. Holmes from behind. You got to watch out. Nice look. John's good vision underneath. He's in there a long time. Kern kicks it out. Watkins floats it up and in. Three good decisions just then by the VCU teammates. 
Nothing there on the first shot. The second shot was closed down by Holmes, and they just relaxed into a leisurely floater. Eight nothing run has cut the Dayton lead to one. And look at the body action defensively. There's a double team with some emphasis just then. There's a foul, but there's some emphasis on the double team and the blocks. Omseal was fouled on the play. Yeah, so watch the little step in here. All of a sudden, you don't have anything. You come across, you have to step in so your teammate can see your jersey. Rather than looking at blue, let him look at white shirts. Second foul on Baldwin. Holmes gets it out for Omseal. 15 seconds to work with. Five minutes gone by. Second half. Holmes flicks it over. Blakely now will... Get a touch for Omsiel. They got that mismatch down there against Baldwin. Blakeney, front rim on a three, rebounded by Nunn. BCU trying to push it a bit. Baldwin looks for an opening. Matched up with Blakeney. Yeah. Point guards, young kids should watch Baldwin, the way he keeps his head up, constantly probing for what's available. Nunn, drive and kick. Kern, they're giving him the three, won't take it. Instead crosses, and he gets inside. Impressive bucket for Nick Kern. Well, not only that, Iron, but you know he's not going to shoot it, so you should be ready for him defensively coming at you. What a blur that was going along the baseline and working it on the strong side. VCU goes in front by one. And now Dayton is searching offensively. Now let's see what they do. Do they dig or double? That's a dig right there and kicks out. Now they go back to him. Two-man game, Blakeney and Holmes. 10-0 run for VCU. Holmes squares, connects. Just nothing you can do about that one. Anthony Grant up along the sidelines there saying he was hit on the arm also on that shot. That was a beautiful delivery. Pull up, pop, bald one. Off the rim, rebounded by Holmes. Holmes and Amseal have combined 12 of 17 from the field. The rest of the team is 4 of 18. They keep mixing it up on the blocks. Amseal this time gets the bounce. Got away from that a little bit in the first few minutes of the second half, Dayton did. Now all of a sudden they're making adjustments on the fly to repost. 47-44 Dayton. Watkins drops it for Johns. Drive and kick. Oh. Ball got deflected to Nunn. That was a good, good grab by Nunn just then. Shot clock down to five. Nunn lets it fly. Short. Rebound. Johns, the back tap. Tracked down by Brea. Got On the move, Smith. And an injured player down there, too. And it's Johns. Five on four. Blickney could not make the adjustment. Holmes put it down low and a chop down with a foul. And Johns is up on his feet limping. Let's see how he went down hard there, and he grabbed at his knee. He's trying to walk it off right now and stay in the game. But they're going to bring him to the sideline, replaced by Shriver. Yeah, he took a pretty good hit going down also to the floor. Yeah, they're looking at that right knee of John's. Hopefully it's just a slam on the floor rather than a twist. Remember, they've gone at Shriver every, in the first half. And just about every time they're looking to do it again. Um, seal. Body bump. In and out. Foul was called on the floor against Shriver. CBS Tuesday. The FBI's are all new. FBI. FBI International and FBI Most Wanted. Three teams. One night. The FBI's all new episodes. Tuesdays on CBS. Streaming on Paramount+. Plus. Third foul on David Shriver. Brandon Johns, particular area on that right knee that he was favoring. Dayton up by three on VCU. High screen holds. Still Tough trying. defense from Jackson. Still trying to go against Driver down low. Omseal, the back in, the turnaround, too much. Rebounded by Holmes. Shot clock winding down. Holmes missed it and a shot clock violation. He went for the EFIS. <laughs> and a turnover by Dayton. I'm sure for Mike Rhodes' his angle down at the other end of the floor, he was going to say, just, oh no, not this. Can't happen. They got to get Shriver an open look here to maybe bury a three. He's been quiet. They've been really all over him. Baldwin. Flips it over to Watkins. Nice. Double team. Baldwin. Got him. Great Baldwin. Great decisions. 
go to your left side and make a pass from the post. We're tied at 47. 11.45 to play in regulation. Smith using that high screen from Amsil. He's got the matchup with Schreiber. They go over the top. Smith, shake, bake, missed it. Rebound, controlled by Deloach. Deloach boxing out perfectly on that trip. Watkins thought about it. Stumbles, tries to save. Oh, I'm Baldwin out. gets in there and calls a timeout. Great watch hustle. Watch out, watch out. And bodies flying, but inadvertent as Deloach hit the deck. Yes, here's Baldwin just lining it up. He just can't give him that shot wide open. The ball's up for grabs right now. Is this a championship game? I think so. Brandon Johns went down hard on his knee on this exchange. Headed to the VCU bench. And Evan Washburn has more. Yeah, guys, good sign. Obviously, he's back in this game. Appears to be more of a contact injury to the floor there. Did some rubbing with it with the athletic training staff, but no added support, no ice. He's just fighting through this right now. And Johns is a guy who does the dirty work yep. for this VCU squad from Lansing, Michigan. A lot of times you hope you can get your hands down and brace a fall like that, but that was a really solid contact. Baldwin, the bounce. Well, on that timeout play where guys were scrambling, they ended up getting the ball back. And they get a, duck, a, a pair out of it. 49-47, VCU. This has actually been a low turnover game considering how there's been defensive emphasis on both ends. Shot clock is winding down. They drop it inside for Holmes. The back end on Deloach. Blakeney lines it up. Off the rim, rebound, controlled by Dayton Kamara on the track down. Another effort by Holmes on the offensive glass, too. Dayton is 2 of 13 from long range. VCU is 6 of 13. Dayton, one of the best teams in the country, defending the three. Right through the hands of Holmes, and then he grabs it with four to shoot. Holmes, they got nothing going on here. Forces up. <laughs> a fumble upon fumble for about three seconds just then until he realized what you said. The shot clock is winding down against him. 22 points for Holmes, 11 rebounds, and a foul on this end against Dayton. It's going to be Blakeney. The number one seed, Dayton. The number two seed, our star comparison, Deron Holmes the second. 22 points, 11 rebounds. He just had a desperation three go down. Baldwin, the Atlantic 10 Player of the Year, Defensive Player of the Year, nine points and two rebounds for the Rams. Yeah, six of those rebounds for Holmes on the offensive end when they've needed it. But a long way to go in this one. It's shaping up as a pretty good last three minutes of action. Third foul on Blakeney, 14 fouls on each side at the 9.56 mark of this second half. And you don't want to say it too loud, Ian, but only 10 turnovers between these two teams today. Six for Dayton. VCU has gone 21-3 and three in their last 24 games. Dealing with a zone look here. Yep, the 1-3-1 look. Johns attacks it. It's denied. Holmes, but the loose change to Loach. Deloach sat himself on the baseline underneath that basket because he knows eventually if they get it to the middle there, it's going to be an open opportunity for him. VCU up by one. Deloach has cracked double figures. 11 points, six rebounds. Amsil, the big first half. Good heads there out front. Lightning draws a double. Kamara lost it on his hip. Recovers. Kick out. It's out of bounds. Smith a little late getting there. Just made a desperation attempt, and he stepped on the baseline on the uh, sideline. And, and you heard me use that phrase in the post when a catch is made down there, kind of a dig, which is kind of like you fake like you're going to double team. That trip just then, VCU was not faking. They went strong double team and ended up with the ball back. Third turnover of the half for Dayton. VCU yet to turn it over. We're going to hit the nine-minute mark of the second half. Something along the baselines is generally good. Get it into the paint. Deloach on a kick for Watkins. None with 10 to shoot. 
Now into the hands of Baldwin. None. Swing. Watkins makes his move. Baldwin lets it fly. He's got it. A three. Ace Baldwin rings the bell from the outside. Yeah, and where the ball started, it started on the left side again. When VCU gets into the rhythm, going left to right, they've got open shots. Nice adjustment on the fly by VCU. VCU 50% from downtown, 7 of 14. They've got a 54-50 lead. Kamara loses it. Foul call. Might be Johns from behind. Watch as it goes. It's going to go right across the floor when he's finished with it. And then Baldwin just kind of setting right into his shot. 34% on the season. And I think his teammates saw that one coming. VCU is shooting 67% in the second half. Third foul on Johns. 15 foul against the Rams. Yeah, I've been getting those clean touches for Holmes in the, down on the blocks. He's been outside, and now he's trying to wave people away from him. Kamara, one-on-one -on -one with Johns. Kamara off the rim. Rebounded by Nunn. Nobody picking him up. Baldwin off. Yeah, what, what threw him off just then was he was trying to get a, a foul called on that play, and it took him off the rhythm of his own jump shot. The VCU lead is four. We are under eight minutes to play. Malachi Smith didn't play in either of the first two meetings, dealing with ankle injuries. Each ankle cost him a game. Watch out. Holmes missed it. Holmes is fouled. Now we get a timeout. Our game summary, one of the biggest stories in the game, VCU's ability to make three-pointers going against one of the best three-point defensive teams in college basketball. Four of seven from downtown in the second half, limiting turnovers as well for the Rams. And it's been pretty easy to dissect in terms of when Baldwin has the basketball, he has terrific skills in terms of the pull-up. But now he's just getting three shots at the top of the key area and beyond from three. Another one of his set shots where he gets it off quickly because you notice he doesn't have to bend and really elevate it to his shot. The shot is gone before the defender gets there. This is actually VCU's largest lead of the day. Four. Dayton up by as many as 11. They led this one 41 to 30. Extended 24 to 9 run for VCU. Holmes has put up 22 points. 67% shooter gets a friendly roll. Let's check in with Evan. Well, guys, down the stretch, it's important to keep an eye on Dayton's legs. Remember, they've been leaning on basically their starting five this entire tournament. Deron Holmes has played all but three minutes in these three games. He's obviously still producing, but when we get into these critical moments against this style of ECU, it could be the decider. Yeah, great point, Evan. They played the semifinals yesterday. Actually had a day off on Friday in preparation. Kern. Kick. That's that shooting that shot for 15 or 17. Baldwin, bullseye. He is, though. Nice decision by Kern. He found Baldwin wide open, so take it to a guy who's comfortable shooting the basketball. He's picked it up in the scoring category. 14 points for Ace Baldwin. 56-52 VCU. Under seven minutes to play here in the A-10 championship. Tight defense. Holmes yeah. gets rid of it. Great pressure. More like VCU accustomed to seeing. Shot clock is down to eight. Smith trying to get everybody organized. They give him a couple of defenders. Smith, no look. Corner, Kamara. Too strong on a three and a push underneath against VCU. Might have been Watkins on the left side. So you take a look at Baldwin just comfortably pulling up for that mid-range shot. We talked about him in the open of this broadcast. And now all of a sudden, look at this defense starting to come out as far as they can, double teaming, waiting for him to make a turn. They're right there on the turn. He just has to basically emergency pass it away from himself. Third foul on Watkins. He heads over to the VCU bench. 17 fouls against the Rams. So a one and one here for Deron Holmes the second. Five for eight from the free throw line, but you better prepare for a box out of guys under 70%. The 2020 Arizona High School Player of the Year, Deron Holmes. He was a major recruit. Multiple high schools, Compass Prep, Millennium High School, Montverde. His dad played high school basketball with Antoine Walker and Donovan McNabb. 
Good combo. Not bad. I mean, he's just put up sensational numbers all season long. 26 points, 13 rebounds for Holmes. We've got a two-point game with six and a half to go. Baldwin gives it up. Ball movement leads to Kern. Kern, that drive across the lane. No good. Deloach couldn't grab it. He does on the second effort. But it was out of bounds because Kamara touched it as he was going after yep. the basketball on the baseline. Yeah, good call on that one, Ian, because that shot was so wide left that there was an ability to go track it down. And here it comes. We'll see. Is he out of bounds? Yeah, right yep. there. Good call. Ryan O'Connell all over it. Yep. Outside Johns. Now it's Kerr. Tries the same move. Contact. And it's going the other way. Offensive foul on Kern. Yeah, they're off, obviously reading Kearns in terms of him going to his right. They're jumping him on the right, but they also understand he's not taking that open 15 to 17 footer. So if you're defending him, just sit back and wait on it. And now Watkins will check in, replacing Kern. Third foul on him. First VCU turnover of the second half. We come up on six minutes to play. Another good matchup out front right here with none on Smith. Tom Seal. Good cut. Cutter. Holmes. Can't get it to drop. Kamara guides it. And it's going to go the other way. What appeared to be an easy delivery for Holmes cutting to the basket. But Johns kind of meets him. Watch the cut. Here's the cut. Now I'm wide open. I'm going to score. No, you're not, because Johns is right there to defend him. Well done. Really wasn't in terrific position to start, Johns, but he made up a lot of ground in a hurry. And a problem for Dayton. Kamara just picked up his fourth foul. He's replaced by Blakeney. Yeah, I think you give him until, like, under the four-minute media timeout give him a minute or two and then get him back in if the score stays the set the way it has been six points for kamara two of eight from the field back in by john yeah watch for that jump hook vcu up by two the adjustment it rims out tapped up in the air and watkins secures it for the rams vcu gets another chance here watkins a terrific job on the offensive glass this afternoon with four baldwin makes his move off the rim on the jump shot, and Dayton controls down by two. That's the downside with that floater. When you're going towards the basket quickly like that, you pull up, your momentum takes you to the back rim rather than the front rim. Smith feed it to the post. Holmes trying to create some space. Is it a double team or just a dig? Kick. Smith missed it too long. Rebound. I'm seal. They go after it. Save. Dayton. Blakeney loses it on the way up. Ball is knocked away. And controlled by Nunn. On the move. Nunn takes it to the rim and finishes. Jaden Nunn on the attack. The beauty of that is they did not try a Watkins lob on that fast break just then. He read it absolutely perfectly. And VCU getting something off the defensive glass and making it happen at the offensive end. Dayton has missed five shots in a row. VCU taking advantage. Yeah, they go get it. And then that's not over yet. Here comes the conversion down the other end. The drive and the finish. Beautifully done. So the season series, January 13th, VCU, a one-point victory. They scored with 16 seconds left. Dayton won the rematch. The road team won each game. We've got the neutral site A-10 championship here today in Brooklyn. 58-54, VCU, 4.35 on the clock. Smith against Nunn. Still looking for Holmes down low. Holmes was asking for it. Yeah, he was open for a second. They missed him, though. John's doing a good job defensively. Freya lines it up. Off the rim. Tip in. Blakeney couldn't get it to go. And here comes VCU. Deloach, early touch. Passes out of the post, plenty of time on the shot clock. Yeah, this is a good one there. Mike Rose calling for them to reset and reload it. Make sure they get a good look. 2021 VCU lost to St. Bonaventure in the A-10 title game. None.
Try to make a move inside. Shot clock is down to four. Swing it. Baldwin, he's going to have to hoist. Baldwin tosses it up. Off the rim, no. Back tap. VCU's got it. I think that was a Dayton player who tipped it out just then. Extended possession here for the Rams. We are under four minutes to play. Four-point game. Nice to have a guy who can control the tempo of the game, handling it right here. Baldwin on the bounce. Deloach wheels inside for the deuce. Yeah, that was just well done by Baldwin, a guy who just has so much experience and seasoning. It's the largest lead of the day for VCU, and Dayton has gone cold at the wrong time. Dayton has missed its last seven shots. Holmes on the baseline, a whistle. We'll get a timeout with 3.16 to go. Coming up next on CBS, a champion will be crowned in the Big Ten. It is Purdue, the one seed against the 10 seed Penn State from Chicago. We'll have all the action coming up. Jim Nance, Bill Raftery, Grant Hill, Tracy Wolfson, the rest of the crew for the Big Ten Tournament Championship. Here in the Atlantic Ten Championship, two timeouts remaining for each side. Possession arrow in favor of VCU. The foul numbers, Dayton still has a foul to give. The next foul on VCU will put Dayton in the double bonus. Yeah, it's clearly not panic time for, for, for Dayton, but one of the things to watch for if this lead does expand a little bit with their style that they play, a lot of times it's difficult to come back because of the pace that they're accustomed to. Third foul on Deloach. 3.16 to go here in regulation. Holmes has gotten a lot of opportunities today. 7 of 10 at the line, 26 points, 13 rebounds, 4 blocks. Nylon. And I'll say one thing about his shot if you watch it. There's not a whole lot wrong with that shot. He should be a higher percentage shooter than that. He's got great fundamentals. Watch the follow through. And the ball just spins as well as you can get it spinning. A-10 rookie of the year last season as a freshman. He gets his team within four. Counted down to the three-minute mark. Second half. Johns against Umseal. Let's see if he's patient. Bodies bumping. Johns in a crowd. Baby hook doesn't go. Rebound leaks to the outside. Track down by Johns. The jumper. Watkins. Yes, sir. On a three. He's not afraid to take a big shot, Watkins. We talked about him in the first half in terms of the punch he gives this team. And another loose ball opportunity on the offensive glass. And they've had 10 offensive rebounds. VCU has this afternoon. Big difference. One. Yeah, difference maker. 13 points for Watkins. The lead is seven. Brea puts it on the deck, leaves it inside. Holmes, denied. It was Watkins who got a piece. Shot clock winding down. They don't know it. Yep. Shot clock violation. Yeah, Watkins at both ends of the floor just then. He took like a half a wild swing at the ball and made contact on it. Here he is right there with the swing. He gets it up and blocks it. And then here we go. We go to town. We get the basketball. Johns releases the ball. One of the best parts about this play. You know you're going to get a shot from the right side, but he releases the ball to his point guard who can make a decision on the fly. So we talked about three-point shooting. Dayton's excellence in that category, defending the three. VCU has bucked the trend five of nine from downtown in the second half 217 on the clock vcu 63 dayton 56 one seed versus the two seed here in the atlantic 10 championship they got to switch it up now they got to go after make some decisions be a little more aggressive back door johns couldn't finish and a foul call that's going to stay right here jalen deloach came away with a loose ball now, Dayton starts to lean towards half court, making the defensive. See how they're all on this side of the ball almost. And a perfect time to kind of just be patient and go to the baseline. It Hands is. on ball. That was a good block up front. Foul was called on Holmes. That ball was up in the air and free. Yeah. Looked like he had his hand right in the middle of the ball. 16 fouls. It was off the rebound action. Johns works in for two. VCU extends the lead. We're down to a minute 50 left. Dayton needs points. Kamara misses on a three ball. 
And it's rebounded by Deloach. Yeah, they're cleaning the glass, too, when they have to down the defensive end. They've been out-rebounded 33-28, but they've gotten key ones. Baldwin controlling the pace here. Only one turnover for Baldwin, and he's played a bunch and had the ball in his hands a bunch this game. And a foul out front. Yeah, see that fumble at first, and then the catch, and then he goes to work on the baseline. I love the way he recognizes defensively. He can't go to the middle, but there's just a little bit of room on the baseline side. Ace Baldwin at the free throw line, 17 foul against Dayton. The lead is 10. First free throw of the second half for VCU. Tomorrow on CBS, grab your gear, join the NCIS team to investigate a chemical attack on our nation. New episode of NCIS tomorrow, 9 o'clock, 8 central on CBS. VCU, 10 of 13 of the free throw line. And it's rebounded by Holmes. Dayton, though, down by 10. Smith, Euros, kick. They need it. Umseal rims out on the rainbow three. Rebound ripped down by Nunn. And he's fouled with 1.16 on the clock. Dayton has missed 10 straight shots. And I'll tell you one thing, too. I am the, the first half this when Anthony Grant was coaching of Dayton, and he, and he knew that VCU was going to come at him full court and be pressure, and they'd probably be all over the place. The first half, not so much. Second half, I thought it was terrific in terms of we've seen more VCU basketball here. And that's it for Tamani Kamara put together two fantastic games here in the Atlantic 10 tournament, but just never got into the mix here this yeah. afternoon. He was, he was in early foul trouble, and the shot just wasn't working for him. Two of nine from the field, 0 of three from three-point territory, six points, and had six rebounds. And had 28 yesterday on 12 of 13 shooting. He couldn't miss. He set an Atlantic <laughs> 10 tournament record, 12 of 13 from the field. One-on-one one. One one here for Jaden Nunn. A sophomore from Flint, Michigan. Rebounded by Holmes. A minute 14 on the clock. Got to go quick and get some quick hitters like this. Pick it up. I'm sealed. It's off. Rebound. Last touched by Watkins. So Dayton will retain possession with 106 to play. In under two minutes, they'll review that. Make sure they have it correct. So that gets each coach a little bonus timeout to yep. talk to their respective teams. It's going to be Jeff Anderson and Brian O'Connell shoveling through the video. You feel like you're eavesdropping on them, don't you? <laughs> Looks like we're the only two they're looking at. <laughs> And I think they were right. Yeah. Watkins got a piece that changed the trajectory of the ball as Blakely had it, and then boom. Unless, ooh, right at the end. Maybe that right, right hand. There was a little bit of a touch on the right fingers. It's scary when we both say ooh at the same time. Yeah, watch, watch now right here on Blakely, yeah. right there. I'm not sure if the officials saw that initially. And they are still taking a look at the video. And it's going to go the other way. And that's why you do it. Yeah. To get it right. Absolutely. It was Blakeney who grazed it. Right. As the two made contact, trying to come away with a loose ball. 106 on the clock. VCU in control. Up by 10 with possession. Johns gets it in for Deloach. And a quick foul. Deloach is only a 58% shooter, so he'll head to the line. Well, and from a strategy standpoint, I think that makes sense, too. Minute six, more than three possessions that you're behind. The consistency of this VCU program, they have made nine of the last 11 NCAA tournaments played. So that goes back to Shaka Smart, the continuation, Mike Rhodes, the job that he's done with the Rams. There has been a standard of excellence. Deloach missed it. They try to move it up the floor quickly here with Smith. We hit one minute to go. One. Smith, the arm bar. Hangs.
Can't hit the floater, tip in. Man, there's a lid on the rim for Dayton. They can't get anything to no. drop, and a foul called on Blakeney. And about three minutes ago, you could see it in their body language, couldn't you? The way they just were kind of like demoralized that they couldn't get it and steal one. And here he gets it right up on the rim. It spins the other way, but the putback relatively easy. Just hits the side of the rim and can't kick over for them. They have missed 13 straight shots here at the end of regulation. Brandon John to the free throw line, 71% shooter. So for this VCU squad, they went from the first four to the final four in 2011. First team to do it. Lost in the round of 64, the round of 32 over that long stretch. Johns goes one out of two. And a chance to write a new chapter thanks to a 7-0 run. Jumper doesn't go on the seal. Johns has got the board. Final 40 seconds. Now just trying to play keep away and a foul given by Brea. And, I, and you touched on the fact that Dayton could not hit the shots. A little bit of that has to do with the VCU defense, but the other side of the coin is VCU executed offensively when they needed to. The equation was very simple for Dayton. Had to win to get in. VCU, the general feeling was it was the same situation, yep. just based on all the data and metrics in preparation for the NCAA tournament. They were not popping up on anybody's grouping of teams that would get an at-large bid. They've certainly played like an NCAA tournament team, and now they're going to be an NCAA tournament team thanks to the conference championship. Yes. Baldwin, 16 points, 7 assists, jumper from Smith, uh -huh. and even the banker won't go for the New York City native. Yeah, go figure, right? If any shot should have gone in right there, it's the prayer at the end of the game. Oh, for their last 15 from the field. Well, we got a little action at half court, Yeah, possibly. it was Blakeney and Nunn who exchanged words. And the officials got in between it. Jeff Anderson and recognized Right it. on the money with that, Jeff Anderson. He was. didn't want this to exacerbate in any way. And they're still talking right now. Nunn's teammates are trying to calm him down and tell him, hey, yeah, look, hey, just... we're 20 seconds away from winning the Atlantic 10 tournament. You know, you point to the losing team and say, look at the scoreboard. Yep. Somebody should just tell him to look at the scoreboard. He gets hit a little bit. And, and they kind of walk it to half court a little bit. So Blakeney goes to the bench. Good work by the officials. Just to control it, a lot of frustration. One second difference, shot clock to game clock. VCU fans start the celebration. The Rams, the number one seed in the Atlantic 10. Great second half by VCU. There's going to be time on the clock. And they're going to have to trigger it in to make this official. VCU wins the Atlantic 10 championship. They're going to the NCAA tournament. Rams tough. They lock down Dayton down the stretch. And take this one 68 to 56. VCU is dancing once again. The Atlantic 10 Tournament Champions. They get the automatic bid. It is now a nine-game winning streak for Mike Rhodes' squad. And they are looking for their first NCAA tournament win under Rhodes, who's in his sixth year guiding this program. The defense of VCU, too much for Dayton. And the Rams are going to the big dance. Dayton led this one by as many as 11, Jimmy. But... You could feel yeah. the the flip switch a bit early in that second half. I do remember when Kern had that lob dunk on the left side. That kind of got everybody's energy level going. And to your point, 
they really kind of hung in there and picked it up. Evan Washburn with an emotional Mike Rhodes. Coach, congratulations, 8-10 champions. How did you grab control of this game in the second half? We just got tougher. We got tougher. That's what we did. We got we got some rebounds. Brandon Johns became a man, and we, we, we found a way around the basket just to be tougher. All the credit to Dayton. They have an awesome coach. They have an awesome program. We had, a, we had our hands full today, but in the second half, we just got tougher. You describe this team as the most special group you've had in 28 years in coaching. I can kind of see it in your eyes. What emotions best describe you know, your feelings right now? You go through stuff as a program, right? As a coach, as a team, you go through stuff. We were five and four, and everybody counted us out. How you like us now? The last time you were in the NCAA tournament, you didn't get a chance to play in the first round. Yep. Had to forfeit during COVID. How much has that been on your mind and some of these players' minds that were oh, part of that? Well, one of, our, one of our core values is appreciation. And, you know, when we lost that opportunity in the bubble to play an NCAA game, we could never get that back. I just tell these guys, appreciate every moment you have because we went through it. We went through it, and this isn't a given. So let's appreciate it. Let's be humble about it, but let's really appreciate it. Congratulations, Thanks so Mike. much. Appreciate it. I'm going to bring in Ace Baldwin here. Ace, you were part of the, the charge in the second half. What were the conversations amongst the players about taking over in the second half to win this game? Uh, coach was real big. We wasn't doing our part on defense, and Coach was real big on uh, playing defense. Like, that's not what we do in the first half. So the second half, we just took it upon ourselves and just play defense. And if we don't give up no, no fouls, no, we're going to win the game. What do people need to know about VCU as you get set for the NCAA tournament? Uh, we're the type of team that's going to make a run. We're not scared of nobody, and we prepare for anybody. Congrats. Enjoy it, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right, Evan, big smile there for Ace Baldwin right at the end. And Mike mentioned it. 2021, they made the NCAA tournament. Their game was canceled because of COVID protocol, so they never got a chance to participate. Welcome to the Big Dance. Inside College Basketball, presented by Progressive Insurance. Greg Gumbel, Clark Kellogg, Jay Wright, Seth Davis. Uh, I don't know much about basketball, but I know if you miss 19 of your last 20 <laughs> shots, you're not going to win very many games. That's right. Yeah. That, was some, that was some great defense and shot making. You know, they when it comes down to games like this, two great defensive teams, somebody just got to make shots. Mm -hmm. man. That's what and it comes down to. They hit threes. Watkins hit big threes. Yep. And um, it was a great performance by VCU. Happy for Mike Rhodes. He's from Pottsville, VA. <laughs> and he was a Division Three National Player of the Year as a player. I didn't see him that emotional when he won wow. the national championship at Lebanon Valley. Let me ask you this. What does a coach do when your guys just cannot make a basket? When all of a sudden, and you can see one guy going cold, the whole team going cold? You act like it's okay. And you tell them, keep taking the shots. But inside, Not you're okay. dying. You're yeah. saying, like, yeah. we just don't have it. And you try to do things defensively to try to create some easy baskets for yourself. Yeah, you know, what happened there, not only was it the shot making of VCU, but there were some timely defensive rebounds that Dayton did not get that led to six or eight points at the critical juncture of the game. And when you're shooting it poorly, you can't give the other team extra shots late in the game. And that's what happened. Tough loss for Dayton, but a tremendous effort by VCU. Definitely. VCU, one of the great mid-major programs in America. Consistency, not only over time, but through a variety of coaching yeah, changes. From call. Jeff Capel, the Shaka Smart, Will Wade, Mike Rhodes. And I was very impressed. They get down 11 early in the second half. They didn't panic. They stuck with their identity. And that, I think, is what Coach Rhodes is talking about after the game. We got to know who we are. This mm -hmm. is a team that started off, you know, with a bad start. Yeah, five uh, and four. Five and four to yeah. start the season. And it was interesting. I had actually forgotten until Evan Washburn had, had mentioned it about that they had made the NCAA tournament in 2021, and they were the only team didn't that play. had a COVID issue and right. couldn't play in that tournament. The heartbreak that those guys must have felt. So I think that's the emotion. Mm -hmm. But it was it was knowing your culture, knowing your identity. Hey guys, let's just keep guarding, keep grinding, turn this thing around. And boy, did they do that. As we see them continue to celebrate, Jay, I want to ask you, assess this team now. VCU has won nine in a row. They shot 56% in the second half. It's a team that is peaking at the right time. They got they outscored the opposition's bench 17-7. 
17 to 2. That's that's a great point. You mentioned all the criteria that it takes to be successful in March in the NSA tournament. You got to be able to score. You yep. got to be able to good defensive team, but you got to have a bench too mm -hmm. because things happen in the tournament. You get one guy in foul trouble, and if he's vital to your team and you don't have a, somebody off the bench, you're done. So they've got all the ingredients of a, of a great team, and I'm really happy for Mike Rhodes, as you said. I forgot about that, too, that, that they were the only team that wasn't in that year with COVID. All right, once again, congrats to the VCU Rams. They win it 68-56.